All right, so today's video is gonna be kind of a short one, but it's one that I get asked all the time. Anytime we do graphics card reviews or we talk about performance metrics or like our New World video, I use an overlay, obviously, which is MSI Afterburner, and people keep asking me, how do you get that to work? I've tried, it's not working, what am I doing wrong? So today it's gonna to be a short, quick, easy video showing you how you can monitor what's happening with your graphics card while you're in your game using a free piece of software. Today's video is sponsored by me and these three graphics cards we're giving away. You can't see them because they're not actually here right now. Why? Because I want you to click the link down in the description below to see exactly what cards they are. Worldwide, for free, anywhere in the world where giveaways are not prohibited. So if you wanna learn all about which cards we're giving away and how to enter and when it ends and all that sort of stuff, then you're gonna have to pause this video, click the link and go and enter. Don't wait, you'll be sad if you did. You know, like Wayne Gretzky said, the only shot you miss is the one you take and you didn't 100% do. All right, so this is MSI Afterburner. I think the name confuses a lot of people. People go, well, I don't have an MSI graphic graphics card, so why would I use MSI Afterburner? Afterburner, believe it or not, is that not actually the piece of software that comes with MSI graphics cards to control it, ironically enough. It's actually a universal piece of software that all it does is allow access to reading the EEPROM that's inside your graphics card, and then you can use the slider to adjust um, overclocks and such inside of what's allowed within your VBIOS. So your VBIOS tells you what the maximum amount of power limit is, power draw, um, how far you can push those numbers, what's with, considered within range of the slider when it comes to the overclocks. But that's not the point of today's video. The point of today's video is to show you that MSI Afterburner also comes with a piece of software built into it called Reva Tuner. Now the first things first, if you wanna start uh, monitoring what's happening with your system, we need to have something for it to hook. Now, the hook is when it goes, okay, what API is being used? Is it Vulkan? Is it DX10, 11, 12? Yeah, I went way back to 10. DX9 even can be hooked here. So the software will automatically detect what type of API is being used, and then all it does is hook onto that API, which gives all the information. What is the temperature? What is the percentage uh, usage of the graphics card? What is, heck, even the CPU? You can even monitor all your CPU temps. Now your MSI Afterburner might look different than mine, and the reason for that is if you hit the little gear icon, this brings up the settings, and we have a lot of different options available. If you scroll to the right to user interface, you can change the skin. My favorite skin is the MSI Cyborg Afterburner skin, red by Dre Rex Design. There's a bunch of them in here. Um, so for the sake of following along, you might wanna use that one or the default MSI Afterburner V3 skin, Big Edition, because if you don't, and that's really big as you can see, it may look a lot different for you. In fact, we'll use the default skin just so that we can keep things as uh, uniform as possible. Now you need to have something to hook, as I already said, so we'll be using Heaven for this one. But if we go ahead, and I have this massive right now, just so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing here. We need to get our uh, Reva Tuner set up to detect our games. Now Reva Tuner is the second piece of software that comes built into MSI Afterburner, which is what's actually doing the hook. So if you come down here to settings and go over here to on-screen display, this is where you'll click the more button, which brings up Reva Tuner. Now we're gonna back up here just for a moment because you have to be able to have something to monitor. Now, if you double click over here on the graph, that will actually pop it out. And this is how we can see what's happening here over a distance of time. Or you can right click on that and hit properties. This will bring you right up to the monitoring tab. So there's a couple different ways to get there. Now, anything that's got a check mark on the left is going to appear over here on the right. You can see we've got things here I don't wanna see like bus usage, vid usage. And if we come down here, and look for our check marks on the left. This is where it all is right here. So we got fan tachometer, I don't want that. Fan speed two, I don't care about that. So I don't want any of that stuff. When I hit apply, then you can see the graph over here changed. I'm showing you this because what's showing here is what's going to show on the on-screen display. Now, if you want to show up in the on-screen display, you'll notice over here on the right, we've got properties which says in OSD. And to toggle that, you'll turn on or off this checkbox right here, which says show in on-screen display. Or if you hover over it, it gives you a little tool tip to tell you uh, how that works. Now you can select various things by holding control and clicking just like anything else in Windows. Um, or you can just shift the top or click the top, hold shift, click the bottom and it grabs everything in between. So the things I usually monitor are GPU temperature, GPU usage, core clock, 
if we want to monitor like CPU usage overall, we could monitor you know, CPU temperature, CPU usage, and we can actually change this after we're already hooked and we'll show that. Frame rate is the one that people are always like, how do you get that one to work? People seem to confuse frame rate with frame time, frame rate minimum, frame rate average, frame rate max. I pretty much only monitor frame rate. Power percent is on here because that's what we were monitoring when we were talking about New World, how it was overshooting its power limits, which is what we think was leading to some of the under-designed power delivery systems on some 3090s to fail during that particular game. Power limit, that's just gonna either show a one or a zero. One for limited, zero for unlimited, not limited. That's just saying, are we hitting the limit? Yes for one, zero for no. And that's kind of obvious. Anytime you're gaming, you're gonna hit the power limit. It's gonna go right to it usually if it's under load, so you can actually turn that one off to make it cleaner if you want. Same thing with voltage limit. That's another yes or no. We don't need that one, so I'm gonna turn it off. Cool, now if we go ahead and X out of that, it just puts it back over here on the side. All right, so let's go and show you how to hook something right here. You're gonna notice when I start up Heaven, this is a DX11 title. The same thing's gonna happen here for DX12 or Vulcan. Now, a caveat here, some titles will not allow you to hook through software like this. And the same thing happens for like OBS or anything that grabs the API to grab the image. Some anti-cheats don't allow that, uh, CSGO being one of them. So some titles, if you can't get it to hook, you need to research it. It might be the title that's anti-cheat itself is keeping you from being able to hook it, which is unfortunate. There's not much you can do about that unless you're doing like OBS screen capture, then it's fine, but then you won't get the overlay like we're showing here. So as you can see, nothing is showing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit Windows key so I can get back to MSI Afterburner. Click on settings, click on on, sc on the screen display at the top, and then click on more for Riva Tuner. Now you can set up an on screen display toggle. So here I'm gonna just make it like shift F11. So now I can turn it on or off at uh, this particular key bind that shift, uh, plus, or shift plus F11. But if I click more, it might be set to low by default. It might be set to none. I set it to high. And the reason for that is there's variance between titles and the APIs to be able to determine like what is, like how sensitive it is to the hook. I always set it on high. I've never had a problem with that. You can play around with the settings yourself. Now you can see right here, we've got this giant number that just showed up. That's just showing us the corner at which we can set the actual on-screen display. And then you can change other things like how big do you want it to be? On-screen display zoom. So you can make it big or small. We make it huge for our videos so that you guys can see it. On-screen display palette. This is so that you can change you know, what color do you want it to be? So you can see now it's yellow or I'm gonna make it orange, right? And then you can have the on-screen display fill. That's this box behind it. I find by having a fill behind it makes it easier to see it in the game window. And then on-screen display shadow. I like to do shadow just because it makes the number a little bit easier to see. The problem is once people make their settings here, they tend to click the X. Well, that closes Riva Tuner, which also closes the hook. So you don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and OK, apply. Now if I hit Shift F11, we should get a hook to happen. In this case, it's not. So because we started Riva Tuner after the game was already live, we're gonna go ahead and just close it, reopen it. And we should notice once the game starts to load here, we should get some numbers to show up at the top. There it is. So I just hit Shift F11 to bring it up. Shift F11 to close it. Now this is the, the other common thing here is if you launch your title first and then launch Reva Tuner, it's hit or miss on whether or not it's gonna detect. It's one of the reasons why I leave the detect setting on high. So now you can see we've got our various things going here, but you can see our overlay is kind of covering up some buttons right here. So we can fine tune that in Reva Tuner by opening it up here. Now you can just sort of drag it around in this square. So by dragging this around, as you can see, it's killing our FPS. That allows us to fine tune where we want it based on the corner that's selected. So if I select the right corner, it moves it over there and then you can fine tune it around in that corner. So here's the data that's showing. 70 Celsius, that's our graphics card temp right now of our uh, 3080 Ti, 98%. And the thing that sucks is they don't have labels here, which would be nice, so you don't have to always remember. But 98%, that's our GPU load. 1845, that's our core clock. 0.968V, that's our voltage. 100%, this is our power limit. And then we have our, it tells us what our API is, uh, D3, uh, D11. So this is Direct, DirectX 11. And then this is our current frames per second. If we bring back up MSI Afterburner, we can change while it's running what we want to display. So for instance, just a quick 
overview here, if we want to increase the power limit, which is this number right here, if we max that out in this card, which is 114 and hit apply, we'll notice this will jump up higher. See, it's going right around to our target. And as such, you can see our megahertz increased, our core voltage increased, our temperatures increased. And we can reset that and everything goes back. Now, if we wanna start changing what it is that we can see, if we go back to our settings and our on-screen or our monitoring tab, we can turn on other things that will show up there. So let's say we wanna know what's our CPU package temp look like. Well, that's gonna be the one that just says CPU temperature. The ones that have a CPU and a number, those are the individual cores. So hit the check mark, highlight, on-screen display, hit apply, and there's our CPU temperature happening in real time. As long as you keep Afterburner open, or at least uh, Rivatuner open, and your game title is not blocking this through anti-cheat, that is how you get the on-screen on display that we show you whenever we're doing our in real time uh, telemetry, if you will, and our reviews and such, that's how we do it. I've been asked this question a bajillion times. I don't think I've ever actually made a tutorial on how to turn this on and use it. MSI Afterburner is free. It works with AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards, and it works with Intel graphics cards, like the, the Z graphics as well, or the XE graphics, as well as the Iris and HD graphics. You can monitor in real time what's happening while you're gaming, if you want this up on screen, if you're curious about your overclocks or you're just doing benchmarks. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Share this with someone that's been asking, how do you make those numbers Jay does show up on screen? There you go. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.